Hi, folks. Welcome back to Quarter Skills Corner. I thought I'd show a picture of an old radio, like this is a radio broadcast. I thought it was kind of cool. I'm into 1920s, 30s, Art Deco. I think it's got some class and style, so I hope you enjoy the old zenith here. The topic I'm going to try to do in this podcast is the question, can Donald Trump win? Um, of course, if we all knew that answer, we'd be betting in Vegas right now, but I'd like to talk over a few things that I think that are very interesting, the observations that I've made, and anybody who's got some observations, and certainly this election, please, please comment in the comment section. And also, I'm also a new podcast channel, so any subscriptions would be really, really great. I'm never going to ask anybody for money. I just need to get to 1,000 subscribers so I get a little better equipment when the ad money comes in. But let me get back to the topic of Donald Trump winning. I don't know, but the polls, of course, looking right now, they're closing. He's still behind. But there's certain things that are happening that are just odd. We can start with the Trump rallies, whether you're for him or against him is immaterial. The point I'm trying to make You'll see tens of thousands of people at every rally, and it's not the same people. There'll be three times the amount outside that couldn't get in. There's something going on, and maybe a bigger phenomenon than four years ago. Is the fact that a lot of these people are cooped up? Probably not. I mean, the economy's starting to open and drips and drabs, but, but they're enthusiastic, and the enthusiasm scale, as they call it, is off the hook it's huge or to say the president says it's huge huge but i see it and it's a phenomenon that i think was even bigger than last time last time might have been seem a little bit bigger because it was new the new trump army so to speak it was a new thing he was a new person involved in national politics And now he's been the president for four years. We're getting an idea what people are thinking. And they're coming out, but at tens of thousands. Tens of thousands. And don't tell me that in the back of their minds that they're wearing masks, some aren't, whatever. But they're putting themselves out in the line. Just for the virus alone, let alone the hassle. The whole day to take off from work. Standing in line for hours. Just going through all that, just to see him for half an hour, 45 minutes, is, is unbelievable. And you see it everywhere. I mean, he could have a rally outside of Los Angeles and fill up a stadium. It's, it's amazing to me, and I think that speaks volumes about Trump's chances. Or I should say President Trump, have to be more respectful. Now, I will say I am a Trump supporter. I'm not going to beat around the bush, I'm going to say it out loud, but I see these things that are changing, like these crowds and the rallies. Give an example, the NBA, of course, for the virus, most of the season was shut down. But you would think that with so many people cooped up that were sports fans, that the NBA playoffs, that the ratings, the number of people watching online would skyrocket. They're down 70%. What's going on? Baseball, same way. What's going on? Why aren't people that love sports and love either basketball or baseball or both, why aren't they watching? What made them change their viewing habits and taste? Is it the political climate? Is it the Black Lives Matter has pretty much infiltrated the NFL and Major League Baseball? That the politics of it has has poisoned the taste for people to watch sports. That people use sports as a getaway from everyday life. And they're not getting that anymore. They constantly bombarded with news uh, at their work, with their friends, and even probably their spouses or families. Constantly. But when you turn the sports game on, you get to watch sports. And they're not getting that anymore. It's poisoned their escape to something that they just don't like. And I think that's swaying voters. I think that's swaying voters by the millions. 
it's just a phenomenon that nobody changes their lifelong habits that quickly without a good reason. And the other thing is, I did make a video on the series here, Why Vote for Biden. And I will be getting one coming out for Donald Trump as well, but reasons why you should or shouldn't vote for him. But it's, I, I, I feel that you have, people are starting to take now that his abrasive personality, his ego, his bombastic uh, things that he does and says, they're starting to separate the policy from the person. And I think slowly Trump is growing on people. And I think the 4 or 5% of the old school neocons, as I call them, in the Republican Party, they might not have voted for Hillary Clinton. They just didn't vote for either. And then they wrote in Mickey Mouse or whatever in a write-in. Or they voted down ballot and skipped the president four years ago. It could very like what will happen because, you know, everybody's got a congressional race. Every, well, 98% have congressional races or governorships. And there's local county, local county executives, city councils. You know, the list is pretty long. So there's always something to vote for every November. But you're seeing the huge amounts of votes coming in for early voting. They're looking at 45, 50 million at the time of this uh, recording that I'm making here. And if I recall, it was, what, 160, 170 million voted in 2016. And they're a third, almost a third of the way there already in early voting. And there's still 10, 11 days to go. Something is happening. Something is happening. Now, story goes, most progressive leftist Democrats are pretty much terrified of the virus. They got them so scared that they won't even, you know, touch the kitchen counter without gloves on, and they drive in cars by themselves with masks on, which is crazy. But you're always going to get those people, but they wouldn't go out early. They're either trying to avoid the crowds later, but I've seen several news articles and videos that shows people standing in line for a long time, social distancing with masks on. Something is bringing them out. Is it to make sure that Donald Trump leaves? Donald Trump gets the hell out of the White House, as some people want to say? Is it? Is it that strong? Is the feeling that you really and truly want to vote for somebody because you really and truly believe in their policies. Is that weaker than I need to vote this person out and I don't care who the opponent is? Which side is stronger? I think I'll be 64 next month, so I have a little bit of life experience. I think that voting for somebody, people are more likely to go out of their way, stand in line, hours go through the hassle because they're voting for somebody. Granted, hatred is a powerful emotion too, and it does motivate people, but I'm beginning to wonder, you know, maybe the polls are wrong. They always are. I mean, if somebody had a perfect poll, they would be a gazillionaire, but something is going on. I think most of the people have made up their mind what they're going to do. I believe 85, 90% are already pretty much locked in, but with the developments in the last few days with Biden's family, I think that 8 10% in the middle are starting to think hard. But the, you'll, 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 you'll see a Biden rally or a Biden event. I mean, my God, I've seen more people at a local high school baseball game. I mean, what's, what's happening? What's happening? You saw that with Hillary Clinton, where they would only show – the front of the crowd by the stage because the rest of it was empty and they didn't want to embarrass her on the mainstream media. Now Fox and them, they showed, of course, the big empty area, but they kept showing the same people over and over to make it look like it was bigger. They do the opposite with Trump. They only show the people around where he's standing and not the whole area plus the triple that outside. But I'm, I'm just wondering, and I think it's just me shooting the breeze with you it's like you're sitting here talking to me, and that's why I put the radio here, you know, so I'll be like the old days. Just listen to a podcast, try to relax, and just think about the topic that we're talking about, 
And I think Trump has about a 60% chance. I think his chances have gone that high. And we can go back and forth on the reasons why, and I won't do that now, but something's happening to the American public that when it comes to politics, that there's huge, huge, huge changes in people's attitudes. You're probably going to get the biggest turnout in the history of the presidential election by a percent of eligible voters. Now they normally say a big turnout is good for Democrats. I live in upstate New York. I've run in several local races. I've been a councilman in the past. And that's true to a certain extent, but something else is going on. The registrations are going through the roof. And I just can't put my finger on it and call it a gut feeling, call it a premonition, call it whatever you will, that I think that enthusiasm that's churning around in the American psyche right now and the chance is just to get the hell out of the house for many they've been working from home on their computer they want life to go back to normal well they say well when there's a crisis like the pandemic the person that's in charge i.e the president gets all the blame and they're doing their best to blame him was he perfect in response no but he did pretty well considering he had no idea what he was dealing with and i think he did pretty good but when you're the president, when things go wrong, you get the heat. If you get the credit for a sunny day, you've got to take the, the hit for a rainy day as well. But the last time people, and, and the Gallup poll just a few weeks ago said, are you better off than you were four years ago? And stunningly enough, stunningly enough, 56% said they were better off in a pandemic than they were four years ago. I think that tells me something. I think it tells me that the last time things were going well for them was when Trump was president. Not Obama, not Bush, not anybody else. Things were going really well for me under the presidency of Donald Trump. And I think that's they want to go back to that normal. Not the normal is there's no bombastic big mouth and blah, blah, blah. I think just the normal everyday life. You know, that's the way the president is. Don't pay any attention. You laugh it off. And that's the way it was before. And the policies were kicking in. And things were actually changing for the better. The lowest unemployment for blacks in the United States in the history of the country. The lowest unemployment for Hispanics in the history of the country. The millions and millions of jobs that were created, I believe close to 75%, or filled by women. It's an extraordinary thing. And a lot of them that hate Trump just don't want to see that. But I think people are smart enough to separate the policy from the person. Now, I watched bits and pieces of the debate tonight. It, you know, I don't think it changed anybody's mind. But something is going on. Something is really going on with the hectic pace of the election. American politics is always messy and loud and you know, crazy, and, and that's the way we always are, and that's just part of our, our national heritage, so to speak. But something really, really amazing, I think, is happening to the electorate and the different parties, both the Republicans and the Democrats. I'll leave you with this. Those of you that haven't voted yet, please do. And I encourage people to vote in person. There's a lot of early voting. Wear a mask. Take your social distancing. You'll be fine. It's no different than sitting in line at the grocery store, at the bank, or any other place we go to in our daily lives. Doctor, you know, anywhere you want to go. It's very important that people vote in person. Not because I think that maybe mailing might not be so secure, but I think people in the United States, in a republic, we're in a constitutional republic, but it's democracy in a way, that they feel good about voting that they cast their vote that somebody gave a damn what my opinion is and this vote is them caring about my opinion and I think that's psychologically that's important so I encourage everybody to vote in person stay safe of course and I want to mention um, a new podcast channel so if anybody could subscribe and push the like button I would really appreciate it it would really really help me out being new if you could share this video on other social platforms.
That would be great. So, folks, we're going to see what happens. The answer is I don't know. But I think this is a big turning point for the United States. We're going to go in one direction or another. And as usual, like most constitutional republics, we've stood the test of time, and I think we'll get through this. So, folks, until next time, goodbye and good luck.